Perfect. Well, hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, we really, really appreciate you taking the time uh, to watch today's webinar. Um, I know there's a lot going on in the world right now, and, and everyone is also, uh, is also quite busy. So thank you again for, for taking the time. Um, so we're JAR Audio, and this is the 10 reasons why brands are embracing podcasts. Um, to give you a bit of background on JAR Audio, we help you grow your revenue and impact through ROI-driven podcasts that make meaningful connections with listeners. My name is Roger Nair and I'm the CEO of Jar Audio. I come from uh, almost 20 years in the advertising world, working uh, with brands like Four Seasons, Netflix, Lamborghini. I've also worked with Nordstrom, um, other, other brands like that. And my co-host on today's uh, webinar is Paul Stewart. Yes, hi everybody, I'm Paul Stewart. I'm head of outreach for Jar Audio. I've been involved in biz dev for a long time in uh, independent film, technology, environment, and uh, now podcasting. I'm really excited to be here today. Mm -hmm. uh, what gets us excited is, is getting a chance to, you know, to, to speak to people like yourself, but why should you listen to us? Uh, Jar Audio has been in, in the podcast world, um, working with brands uh, for the past three years. We're actually one of the first to start producing podcasts exclusively with brands. And we've been lucky enough to keep some great co uh, company working with brands like Lululemon, uh, Expedia, Cineplex, RBC, uh, plus a whole bunch more that we're currently in production with, with right now. But what gets us the most excited is developing winning podcast strategies and executions, which is what we're going to talk about on the webinar today. So let's get right into it. Um, so when we talk about, about branded podcasts, I want to start, start with, a, with a problem. Um, that problem is, if, if anyone's seen that great uh, Seinfeld episode where he goes into the car rental space and he talks about reservations, you know, anybody knows how to take a reservation, you just don't know how to hold the reservation. And, and that's really the most important part of the reservation is the holding. Um, obviously, we're not, you know, selling rental cars, but in this case, marketers know how to capture customers' attention. They just don't know how to hold it. And, and that's a huge problem for marketers when, when, when we speak to them today. You know, aside from the sale, that's really the most important part of, of marketing is that, that holding of, of, of the attention. You know, the cost of customer attention is, is on the rise today. Um, it's increasing year over year. And in fact, it's outpacing inflation. There's a fantastic Harvard Business School study that I encourage you to, to read when we share this presentation later. Um, but, you know, one of the things that we always ask is, is if, if, if the customer of, of if the cost of customer retention is high um, and, and you keep doing all this marketing, what is your marketing in fact doing? Um, you're probably filling the funnel. Uh, that's not the issue, uh, but there's a hole in the funnel. You keep losing people out of that funnel and, and, and you fill and you fill and you fill, but you keep losing customers out of your funnel. And that's very time consuming and expensive uh, for you. We, we absolutely hear that and understand it. You know, when you look at the cost per, uh, per acquisition uh, on an industry industry basis, um, it's incredibly high the, these days. And so what you need to do is you need to keep pushing content out in the world and, and reaching those customers and, and trying to earn their trust. But the reality is that, um, you know, that trust is becoming more and more difficult to, to keep. Um, there's a great report that comes out every year called the Edelman Trust Barometer. I uh, highly suggest you checking out. One of the things they say is those who highly trust brands, um, those who highly trust brands they purchase will reward them with loyalty, engagement, and, and advocacy. So that's obviously what we're trying to, to do. But there's still that hole in the funnel. You, you, you keep losing your customers. So what do we do? we have to retain their attention as best as possible. And essentially we have to fill the funnel, but also retain them more and more. That's where the podcast comes in. That's what gets us really excited about podcasting. So I'm gonna start with some very, very basics uh, on podcasting and we'll kind of expand from there. But you know, just so we're level setting, what is a podcast? So a podcast is either um, a serialized ex uh, experience or it's episodic in nature. Uh, it involves spoken word, uh, it, is, it is audio, and it is digital. The, you know, the, the, the format for podcasting is shifting uh, uh, quite a bit. You know, when, when po podcasts first came out, it was very much a mobile medium, but now we're seeing a lot more podcasts being listened to on desktop, and now we're seeing a lot more being listened to on smart speakers. 
you know, it started out as audio only, but now we're seeing a blend of audio and video. You know, Joe Rogan's a great example where he shows the video and, and pushes it out. And you know, he used to push it out through YouTube. Now it's going to be all done through through Spotify. And, and you know, it first started out as a, um, a, a, a medium that involved downloading the file onto your phone and listening. But now we're seeing a lot more streaming. You know, Spotify is a good example of that. Podcasts were typically free to enjoy, but now we're seeing some examples of gated podcasts. You know, Luminary is a good example where you're paying a premium price for premium content. Um, but still, for the most part, podcasting is, is free. You know, great thing about podcasting is it allows you to really zero in on niche topics. Um, so I'm a big comedy fan. You know, I listen to podcasts for comedy. You can listen to podcasts for drama. Obviously, a lot of great news content, education, if you want to learn something. And, and really, the list goes on and on and on. Um, what it always has to be, though, is, is it has to be great content. You know, speaking of content, people consume three to five pieces of content before engaging with sales or, or buying direct. So, you know, there's, there's just a ton of content being pushed, pushed out there. So as a marketer, you keep pushing out content, but very little of it is effective at getting customers to, to subscribe for more, nor is it habit forming. And this is one of the key reasons why brands are embracing podcasts is for that very reason. You know, when you have a great podcast, listeners are going to continue to come back. They're going to want more, you know, what, you know, whether you're dropping in some information around subscribe to receive episode two and future episodes, or, you know, the host is saying, you know, what's going to happen next to subscribe to, to, to find more, just like a lot of other great forms of content, you know, when you subscribe, you're going to be receiving uh, uh, more and more. And that's one of the great pulls from a marketing perspective with, with podcasts. And it's one of the reasons why the big media players have been in podcasting for, for quite a while now, but more and more every day, you know, brands like Netflix are getting heavily involved. Um, and then you see some of the, uh, you know, some of the um, uh, groups like Disney, NBC, um, New York Times and Bell, um, as well as Spotify. In fact, we were speaking with New York Times a little while ago and, and um, Adam Aston, who's recently just moved on, uh, he was the head of T-Brand Studio, which is their, um, their content studio. He was saying that in the next three years, all major brands will have a podcast and, and we very much uh, believe so as well. And just like other you know, forms of, of entertainment, when, when media gets involved first, um, eventually the brands come next. And, and now that's what we're starting to see. You know, brands are acting like broadcasters themselves. Um, you're seeing podcasts being produced by uh, Tesla, LinkedIn, uh, Expedia, Microsoft. But then you're also seeing uh, podcasts being produced by some more um, what we would call kind of uh, traditional brands like General Electric um, and Toyota. Um, they're all seeing the advantage of, of the podcast and we'll get into why um, uh, very shortly. Let's talk about those reasons. So, you know, when, when we talk about a branded podcast specifically, um, it's essentially like any other podcast, only the series is owned and produced by the brand itself. Um, there's very thoughtful mentions of the brand in the episode, but we do not suggest, you know, talking about the brand throughout the episode because who wants to listen to a, a 30 minute ad? Um, the topics are typically tangential to the brand itself. Um, but you have to deliver a ton, a ton, a ton of value to the listener. And, and some of the ways of, of delivering value include, you know, uh, just being as entertaining as possible, uh, being as helpful as possible, or as being as uh, educational as possible. You know, when we talk about branded podcasts, um, it draws, you know, a, a good branded podcast draws the audience in and then gets them to stay. And, and, and when you get them to stay, that increases the long-term value. That in, um, they then act as evangelists. Uh, they tell people about uh, the show through word of mouth. And because of that, the cost per acquisition actually lowers. And, and so, like I mentioned before, podcasts plug the leaky funnel um, by increasing the retention of the audience. So when we're talking about branded podcasts, a couple of things that we're not talking about, you know, this is not about advertising on a podcast. There are lots of different ways of doing that. And we'll actually get into a little bit of that later on in the webinar. Um, we're also not talking about 
kind of a rotating podcast sponsorship. You know, for example, this episode of My Brother, My Brother and Me is brought to you by Man Crates. Man Crates is an actual real company <laughs> and they do a lot of podcast advertising. Um, but, you know, this is not where you're, you know, this is not where you're coming in as a brand and, and, and purchasing, you know, the, the sponsorship of that episode. This is about you as the brand actually creating the content yourself, either yourself or through, a, you know, an agency like, like uh, Jar Audio. So when we're talking about branded podcasts, the brand is developing original content and treats their customers like a true engaged audience. So again, the brand becomes a, a broadcaster. And this isn't exactly new. You know, we've seen this before and, you know, content marketing has been around for, for a while, all the way back to when the Michelin Tire Company started the Michelin Guide. Um, you, you may or may not know that Procter & Gamble um, is, is uh, responsible for what we now know as soap operas. And even General Electric had the um, General Electric Theater with Ronald Reagan as, as their host. You know, brands have been broadcasters for many, many years. They're just now starting to embrace podcasting as the next wave of, of opportunity. So like I mentioned, you know, when it comes to a branded podcast, you want to have very light mention of the brand. Um, you know, we would suggest maybe on the top, the mid and the, and the tail of the episode. Um, but because this is a, a podcast coming from a brand, you have to absolutely be focused on delivering as much value to the audience uh, as possible. And ways of delivering that is to have the story first. And what I mean by story first is tell a great story first and then have it, you know, brought to you by, you know, whatever, you know, whoever your brand is. Because if you don't do that, again, it's, it's just an ad and nobody wants to listen to a, a very long ad. Um, so a couple of great examples, you know, this is a, a, a podcast called The Message. Um, it was owned by General Electric. You know, if you listen to it, what it is, is a fictional sci-fi series about messages received from space. It's an awesome show. I highly suggest you checking it out. What it's not, though, is it's, it has nothing to do with, you know, General Electric medical devices or aircraft parts, uh, electrical equipment, things like that. Um, it's just a really entertaining uh, piece of audio content. Um, and, and it happens to be brought to you by General Electric. And so what happens is you get this brand halo effect where, you know, because General Electric is synonymous with in invention and innovation, you know, you get that feeling from listening to the show. Another example is a client of ours at Jar Audio. So we produced Out Travel the System by Expedia. Um, this show gives travelers a sneak peek behind the curtain, arming them with insider tips, tricks, and hacks for how to get the best out of their travel. If you listen to it, what you're not going to get is a bunch of, you know, promotion of Expedia deals. That's not what this is about. Nobody wants to listen to that. Um, you know, where the brand halo effect comes in is that Expedia is a service built on its data and travel expertise. And, and so the actual metric that they're looking to improve, you know, in, in, in their organization is they want to be known as a more helpful brand. And so the podcast is meant to be as helpful as possible. So you listen to an episode and you can learn all about traveling through the national parks with your family or traveling to Disneyland uh, with a family of four for under $2,000 um, or how to, you know, solo travel. Uh, what's the best time of year to book your travel? Things like that. So I just covered the first example, but, but why else are brands embracing podcasts? We've got 10 reasons that we're going to walk you through, um, although I just shared one. So we technically have 11 reasons. Uh, so you get a, a free bonus reason. Uh, but Paul's <laughs> going to walk you through uh, what these 10 reasons are. Thanks, Roger. So let's start with number one. Podcasts have a high engagement rate. So when we think about how we do at Jar Audio, we're able to accomplish a 95% listen through rate on a typical 20 to 25 minute podcast on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. And, and just to cut in, I actually just saw this morning, some of our shows are, are seeing a hundred percent. Now they're not all a hundred, oh, uh, but, some. but, but sometimes they are. Um, and so let's just compare that for a second with like a YouTube video, a YouTube video that's a minute long. It might possibly even be more expensive than a podcast. And we're seeing on average, a. Uh, uh, um, uh, an engagement rate of 50% on average of a YouTube video. And so the, the engagement rates of podcasts are astronomically long, right? And as a matter of fact, we think that no other channel has this high of an engagement rate. 
but there's also high engagement value, right? So this study demonstrated that people get as much value out of listening to a podcast as they do listening to music. So just think about that for a second. Think about the value that music has in your life and seeing the same amount of value uh, in listening to a podcast, almost as much as checking the weather and checking the news as we do multiple times a day these days. Number two, podcast listenership is exploding. I'm sure a number of you have seen the Edison Research Infinite Dial reports. If you haven't, definitely download them, they're free. There's a wealth of information about the podcast audience. And from a monthly basis, we're seeing almost 40% of the population, almost uh, 104 million people listening to podcasts on a monthly basis. Now that's monthly basis. The number is lower on, an, on a weekly basis. I think it's uh, more than a quarter, less than a third. Um, and then if we break that down from a demographic perspective, right? It used to be that it was mostly young people, 12 to 34, 34 35 to 54. But right now the boomers have started coming on strong as well. And the listenership continues to expand. I think about my, my dad had open heart surgery, believe it or not, during the first wave of the pandemic. He's 81. Now he, he, he's more spry. He gets up every morning, goes for a walk for an hour and listens to the podcasts every single morning. This was not part of his routine, even before the pandemic. So it's just fascinating, uh, the amount of engagement that is happening with the listener base. In Canada, we obviously cover Canada and the United States, and we're seeing that Canadians are listening to the same extent as the US. We're actually leading the world, uh, Canada the US uh, is in terms of listenership. Number three, podcasts allow you to reach new audiences. So there's a lot of data here. I'm not gonna get into everything other than to say, you know, the, the average podcast listener is more educated, they're more affluent, they're loyal to, bland, to brands. 46% of 13 to 35 year olds are okay with brands promoting products. They spend more money on themselves. You know, there's, they're, they're more apt to, to enjoy luxuries. And um, they also love to learn. Right. I think that's that's probably true of all of us on the call today. Right. Seventy four percent of users listen to podcasts to learn something new. They're heavy social media users, even at a time Edison points out where social media usage is actually going down while podcasting is going up. We're all social media users and influenced by word of mouth. Number four, podcasts give you brand IP with compounding ROI. So let's talk about ROI and value just for a second. It's very difficult for a competitor to copy your podcast. So obviously, if you're a brand or an agency working with brands, you're going to pick a story space, right? That is adjacent to their brand. And you're going to own that space. You're going to build a following in that space. It is very difficult for a competitor to come into that space after you have owned it, right? So the first to market helps fortify your competitive advantage. And this following, you know, we like to say, imagine stadiums full of people listening to 95% of 20 to 25 minutes on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. That value, that following is incredibly value and that's where the return actually comes from. But you can measure ROI across the board, right? Because that following is going to turn into um, brand metrics. You can go to the next slide, Roger. Um, you should be experiencing ROI across the board from, from awareness, increases in authority, increases in consideration. You should be seeing site traffic going up, which improves your lead generation, which improves your conversions and SEO. And naturally the engagement metrics themselves, not just listens and downloads, but engagement. How long did they listen? Where did they skip? Where did they drop off? What were the reviews? And so podcasts, in addition to building this incredible value of the following, they should be increasing ROI across the board. And just to jump in here for a second, um, Amanda, I believe you had asked a question about how we're measuring, um, how we're measuring uh, the engagement rate. Uh, we'll, we'll cover that a little bit later on in the presentation. Um, so we'll get that question answered for you. Yeah, it's really easy to do. Number five, podcasts are an intimate medium, right? So podcasts have thrived because they're able to deliver the one thing that the internet and other mediums haven't been very good at, other than maybe, maybe Netflix. <laughs> right, um, which is intimacy. It's literally in your ear. It's, it's the whisper, right? It's catered to your personal preference. It's mostly solo on your own time. Like when I listen to a good podcast, I always feel like they're talking to me individually, right? And they're portable. 
So naturally you can listen in the car, on the bus, beach, at the gym. My personal favorite, washing the dishes, something I used to hate doing before, and now I absolutely love it, mowing the lawn, grocery shopping. And as a matter of fact, uh, BBC Audio did a study called Activated, where they learned that 94% of listeners consume podcasts while performing other tasks, right? But this multitasking mode of listening actually elevates the engagement of the brand. And, and, and this is counterintuitive, right? Because this study actually goes against everything we're being told about marketing mediums today, that too much clutter equals distraction and lost messaging. But in fact, keeping the brain occupied means that the podcast content is taken in through what's called low involvement processing, which is a, a way more fuel efficient process that has a lower cognitive load. So multitasking while listening to the podcast actually results in improvement in the brand message cut through. Definitely worth, worth reading this study just for the fact that it's so counterintuitive. As Roger mentioned previously, podcasts are a poll medium, right? Listeners subscribe. They seek out the content. They have an active interest in the content that they're listening to. And brands up getting rewarded as a result because weekly podcast listeners spend an average of six and a half hours listening to podcasts every week. That's a, that's a, lot, of, that's a lot of dishwashing. <laughs> Reason number eight, podcasts are also great for internal communications. We often think that they're purely for external communications, talking to citizens, talking to the public, talking to customers, but you can actually produce them for staff, right? They're privately and securely distributed with a direct link or through the internet. And the same measurement options in terms of engagement apply. I think the, the reasons are kind of obvious. They're a great break from screen fatigue during the pandemic. Emails and internets go unread, plus are one dimensional. They're just, they're just so dry, right? They're delivered in a format that the staff can embrace on their own time. Again, going for a walk, doing the dishes, culture building. They could help with onboarding, development, leadership development. And they're delivered in a con conversational style, particularly during the pandemic, right? where we want that intimacy of communication when you're talking to your internal stakeholders or your external stakeholders. Reason number nine, podcasts are a flexible medium. They're not constrained by time, format, ad standards, topic, shelf life. They're completely flexible, right? And you've, see, you, you've seen brands starting to experiment with different types of flexibility, whether it be sci-fi or drama, for example. Number 10, Podcasts have continued through the pandemic, right? Audiences still want to be entertained. They want to learn a new skill or escape, obviously. And podcast consumption has returned to pre-COVID numbers within two months. So there was a dip of 5% in March. And then by May, they were up 10% beyond January and they continue to climb. Paul, do you want to maybe chat about why there was that dip? Well, I, I, I think the argument at the time was that we had lost our commute. Right. So I think that people mostly thought that podcasting was a, a commuting communications channel, mm -hmm. almost like radio drive. Um, and I think that's true to some extent. I think podcast lengths were somewhat determined by the average commute in North America being 27 minutes. But what's what's happened? And, you know, I think it was a surprise at first when we started to see the statistics in April and May. But I think it's no surprise now, which is people have so much more time on their hands. Right. And. I think we all agree we don't want to fill in every single gap. We still want there to be serendipity in our life. We still want to have deep thinking. Mm -hmm. um, when I go to the park, I don't always bring my AirPods, but for the times that I do, I, I greatly enjoy it. So, so the other thing to keep in mind, the other, the other side of the coin, I think, from a pandemic perspective, is we get a lot of questions about how to record in high quality during this time while people, well, well a large number of people, not everybody, are working remotely. So I'll just quickly say that you know, pre-pandemic, naturally, we would have hosts in studio as much as possible to get the quality we wanted. But even pre-pandemic, we had guests all over the world, right? Often working remotely. And so um, during the pandemic, nothing really changed for us. I mean, it'd be nice to have access to those studios, but the only difference was that the, the hosts were now remote in addition to the guests. 
And so what we ended up doing was we built a proprietary uh, remote kit using old tricks that uh, our CTO had learned in his radio broadcasting days, which is we run a direct line from a simple Raspberry Pi computer into an ethernet port of Wi-Fi uh, router directly into our server. So it's an uninterrupted connection that gives us the absolute highest quality. You'll hear that in our uh, RBC podcast, for example, where it was all remote before and, and, and had some challenges with sound, but now uh, it's studio quality. And so not much has changed because of the pandemic uh, in regards to listening and, and audio quality. So those are 10 reasons why brands are embracing podcasts. Um, you yourself and your organization might be interested in starting a podcast. So what are some of the things that you, you need to, to get started? There, there's three main questions that we always like to suggest asking yourself. Um, the first is how can you deliver value to the listener? And this is so important because it's all about the listener. Nobody wants to listen to a bad podcast. Nobody wants to walk away not having either learned something or felt something. Um, and, and, and that's what's going to give you that long engagement rate as well. So ask yourself, you know, what does your audience need? What do they care about? What do they listen to? Uh, what are some of the other podcasts that they're listening to? You know, again, all about delivering that value. So what can you teach or sorry, how can you teach something to that audience? Um, how can you help that audience? How can you entertain that audience? And, and, you know, one of the questions that I always like to ask in our strategy sessions with our clients is what does the world need most that you are most qualified to talk about? And then create a podcast around that. And, and you literally cannot go wrong by doing that. Second question is, are you the right type of brand? One of the things that we always encourage is, is for our clients and, and brands to have creative bravery. Um, if you're able to stretch your, you know, the creative boundaries, it's going to create a better show, much, you know, easier to listen to better, you know, more, enter more entertainment. Um, and, and, and in order to do that, you have to be pushing those creative boundaries. Again, you have to be completely focused on the audience and always, always be delivering value. And the third question is, can you deliver consistent quality? And, you know, when we talk about quality, we talk about a high production value. Um, are you going to be able to have the right host on the show? Is that host going to be um, able to engage with guests and, and also, you know, um, be, be um, uh, attractive to, you know, to your audience? Do you have the right music? Um, does it need to be custom music or is there, you know, needle drop music that you're able to gather? Because there are lots of opportunities for that. Is there multiple scenes available to include in the episode? Um, and we don't like to include multiple scenes just for complication purposes. We include multiple scenes in an episode to actually keep the brain engaged and keep the listener listening because the longer they're listening, um, the, the better the ROI is going to be on, on the podcast for, you know, for your company uh, themselves. Because at the end of the day, this is a marketing medium. So we want to make sure that that, that, that medium is performing. And the, and the other great way, you know, the other best way to increase that engagement rate is to tell well-crafted stories. So if you're confident, you're ready to produce a podcast, let's actually collectively on the call right now, let's make a podcast together and we'll walk you through how the steps are. So this is how you deliver a, a, a great podcast. We think that every podcast should have a 5P framework when you're going into uh, the production. Prepare, produce, push, promote, and pull. So the first section is called prepare, and Paul's going to walk you through this section. I think that's your section, Roger. Oh, is it? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so, I do the so next two. Prepare is just a fancy way of saying strategy. Um, and, and, and so, uh, you know, let's really dig into who this audience is. So again, it's all about audience first. So when we think about our audience, we, you know, and, and these are questions that you already probably have access to because your audience is probably going to come from within your target market. But, you know, what's the age, sex, location, interests, social habits, topics of interest that they, that they might want to hear, um, what their podcast interests are. You know, you do all that research and you uncover kind of who this person is. Uh, you also want to ask what their expectations and needs are right now, you know, and, and that obviously changes over time and depends on what's going on in the world, you know, what sort of things have happened. Um, because understanding those expectations and needs, you know, again, can help you deliver value. 
you then want to take a step back and, and, and look at your brand. Um, you're probably clear on what your brand values are, um, but what does your brand have to offer um, and, and how can that come in the form of a podcast as well? Because then what we're going to do is we're going to take what we know about the audience and what we know about the brand and we're going to create a podcast that kind of fits nicely in, you know, in the middle of all of that. So let's create a, a podcast together. This is a completely fabricated, made up podcast. This does not actually exist, um, but this is a real company and, and, and it's just a random one that we selected. I'm sure you're all familiar with Indeed, the, uh, the, job, the, you know, the job selection site. Uh, let's pretend that they are interested in starting a podcast. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna understand who their audience is. So in the case of Indeed, you know, being in the job, you know, job space, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of people that are looking for work right now uh, with the pandemic. And a lot of those people might be entering the job market for the first time in a very, very long time. So let's pretend like this audience is kind of mid 40s and up. Maybe they've been in management before. They've been in that specific industry for a very, very long time. Um, and, and they are now looking for a job, which they haven't had to do you know, in, in decades. Um, we would consider them to be an infrequent user of the site because they haven't had to look for jobs before. Um, but they're still very valuable because uh, long term, they're going to get back into a management role and perhaps might look to indeed to help fill future positions. We then ask ourselves, what are they going to need? So, you know, under the lens of, of, of the pandemic right now, you know, maybe this audience is expecting to be behind the pack and entering the job, for, uh, job market for the first time in a long time. So maybe they need to be reskilled. Maybe there's some, some things that they feel like they need to learn in order to stay competitive in the, in the job market. You're very familiar with how to create personas, but you know, we absolutely suggest creating a persona around who the podcast listener is. In, in this case, we've created a per persona around Kent. I'll, I'll, I'll have you go through the details of who this, uh, who this person is, but it's nice to have that going forward as you go into the next phase, which is where we understand who our, our, you know, what the values are of the company. Um, in the case of Indeed, it's integrity, respect, leadership, personal growth, excellence, and stewardship. Um, and then we try to figure out what we're, you know, what we're solving for. In the case of Kent, you know, he's looking to enter the market again. Um, he's probably going to want to be entertained. Um, at the same time, he's going to want to listen to a podcast that's useful and he could walk away with um, and, and, and be able to help him in his, in his next phase of his, his career. And so then we're going to start creating a, a concept. Um, we take all this information and, you know, I'm sure you're very familiar with the creative, you know, creative stage. We're going to come up with some concept ideas, um, multiple ideas, but then we're going to whittle them down into this one. You know, in this case, we, we come up with a, a podcast idea that really seems to land well with our persona, but also with our brand values. And, and that's a podcast which tells the inspiring stories of men and women who have made career changes during less than ideal times. What did they do? How did they do it? How did it turn out? And so it just so happens to be that this lines up perfectly with our brand values and, and with our persona. The reason we know that is that we've been absolutely ruthless in vetting the idea. You know, we ask, would Kent listen to this podcast? Is it useful? Is it entertaining? You know, is it something that's going to bore him? <laughs> would, he, would he look forward to the next episode? And you as marketers uh, and working within your companies, you're going to know what's going to fit right. You can actually test that. You, know, you can speak to that audience or you, you're just going to know, you know whether that um, works with, you know, with, with your target. And this is, this is where it all come, comes out. You know, it, it turns out it does work well for us. So we've created this fake podcast. It's called Pivot and Pursuit, Inspiration on Your Career Change Journey. It's a weekly podcast and it's brought to you by Indeed. Completely fabricated. It does not exist online right now, um, but let's pretend it, it does. It lines up perfectly with the, Inde with the Indeed brand. We're then going to need to move on to the next sort of steps in our prepare phase. And that's where we're going to need to think about our guest strategy. You know, who's going to be on this show? Um, what does our season arc look like? You know, how are we going to treat the next 10 episodes, 12 episodes? You know, we happen to look at episode seasons 
in chunks of six. It just helps us with our planning process, but there's really no rules on, on how long your episode season should be. We're then also looking at the story format. You know, what type of a, of a show is this going to be? And Paul's going to walk you through kind of what the options are with the, with the story format in just a moment, which takes us to our next phase, which is called produce. Fantastic. You know, I'm just thinking uh, maybe for future, Roger, we could throw this slide into prepare because I think just before produce, you're going to pick your format, right? Um, uh, and so there's three basic formats that you can um, think about. The first one obviously is interview based. This is, you know, 90% of everything that you listen to in terms of podcasts. It's, um, it's a host, it's a guest, it's a host and two guests. It's being a fly on the wall to listen to a remarkable conversation. Or you might want to step it up and move into narrated format. I would argue maybe one out of 10 podcasts, maybe less out there, um, which is more documentary style. You know, something you'd listen to on NPR or CBC in Canada on a Sunday morning, um, where you have the, the narrator takes you on a bit of a journey uh, throughout conversations that have taken place. So it's less, you know, beginning to end and more a, a journey. Or there's also, uh, we've seen fiction or uh, science fiction dramatic podcasts like um, Blackout, which was done by Sonos, which imagined what it would be like if the United States uh, went dark uh, without electricity for a period of time. It's, it's, actually, it's actually quite scary, uh, <laughs> but it's worth, it's worth listening to. Um, for our pivot and pursuit, we have suggested that indeed you might want to try the narrated format. I think it's an interesting uh, sub topic and subject matter. So I think that narration would definitely sonically add uh, a certain level uh, of depth uh, by using this. So from there, now that the, the format is chosen, we're moving into produce, right? And so typically there would be a, a researcher writer that would research the subject matter. Um, obviously during uh, prepare also, we're covering uh, story arc and we're dividing it up into specific subjects that have been arranged in advance. So the writer researcher will research, they will put together a question line or a cue line script, and that's typically getting approved, obviously, by the brand. Um, you're scouting and hiring a host. There's obviously a whole conversation around whether that host should be internal or external. You know, it definitely should be somebody, we would encourage them to be professional, um, that they are, uh, that they're strong with the gift of gab, that they're able to facilitate a conversation, they're able to evoke emotion, uh, humor, and those sorts of things. Um, but there is often organizations that want to have uh, a host uh, be somebody internally. And so that's obviously a, a conversation that needs to be quite serious. Um, everything is recorded. Typically, you would see the writer, researcher on the, on the recording. You would see uh, an executive producer. Uh, the writer often will direct. You would have an audio engineer doing the recording. Uh, whether you're using remote kits or using something like Zencaster, um, you'd pick the audio quality you're going for and you'd, get, you'd assemble everybody and have those conversations. You can decide if you want stock or custom music, right? To pick the music that best fits the audio persona of the brand. And then some organizations uh, like JAR happen to be more journalistic in our experience. And so we would move to a paper edit before moving to a sound edit. But regardless, there would obviously be sound editing that would then bring everything together and uh, have everything approved by the brand. Um, the message here is continue to vet, right? Be ruthless about the host and the guests. We often do pre-interviews with guests to see, you know, are they, are they going to work or not? <laughs> What's important to them? What, what, what points can we bring into the script uh, that we talk about on our pre-interview? So be ruthless about that. Uh, ruthless about music. Does the music fit the brand? There's nothing worse than music that doesn't fit the brand. I think it really pulls you out of the story. And then pacing, pacing of the story itself. So typically, depending on the format, a six epi episode season usually takes about a couple of months to produce the first two episodes, uh, depending on how in-depth it is. It could be quicker or, or take longer. And then uh, at least by having two episodes in the can, you're able to launch. And then you can release an episode every one to two weeks after that. Some brands who are you know, seriously concerned about capacity or budget might go with monthly. Uh, but we think you know, weekly, bi-weekly is, is the way to go in terms of building that audience and building that, that habit. And then we get to push and Roger's gonna cover this. Yeah, so the next phase in the process is, is called push. Um, and this is where we, 
push our episodes out to the world. You know, one of the biggest concerns that we hear from brands is that this is a very difficult process. And how does, how do I get our show onto, onto Apple and, and Spotify and, and Google and all those sorts of places? The, the, the reality though is this, it's actually quite simple. Um, we recommend signing up for a dependable online podcast server software um, like Omni or Buzzsprout or, or Libsyn. Um, and, and that's what actually allows you to push it out to the world. Um, it, it works almost like a, like a, like a WordPress or uh, whatever CMS you're using. Um, and, and it allows you to um, essentially create the, you know, create the, um, the show notes and, and everything that you need to have tied in with that episode upload the MP3 and then it pushes it out to, to all the different, um, all the different directories. Once it's out onto the directories, uh, that's where listeners can, can now find it. Um, believe it or not, when you listen to your podcast on an app like Overcast or Castbox or, or Castros, um, it's actually just pulling in the RSS feed from Apple. So uh, I, I don't know the exact number, but I'd say probably once you've got it on Apple, you've, you've hit probably 85% of all the, the apps and places that you want your show to go. Um, but when you, when you use a service, like, like I just mentioned, it also allows you to, you know, to send it to, to all of them like Stitcher and, and, and things like that. Um, the other great thing about these, these services is that once you've pushed it out to the world, um, it's going to give you access to all your analytics, uh, your, all your reviews for the show, it's going to also give you an embedded player, which you can use to um, host on your websites uh, or push through through social because it'll also provide you with uh, different social links. And then you're going to want to promote the show. Um, you know, longer the days when you could put a podcast out in the world and it would go viral and, and you know, you just watch all this organic growth. Uh, the reality is, is that you have to put some effort behind the, the, the marketing of the show. You have to treat, treat this like you're, you're a broadcaster and, and, and just like broadcasters of today, you need to uh, tell people that your show exists and, and, and have it stand out from, you know, from the others. We look at our marketing programs, you know, through sort of six buckets. Uh, the first is, you know, just what we call marketing. Uh, this is where we're looking for partnerships and opportunities with media companies and social platforms. Um, so we'll reach out to, let's say it's BuzzFeed and, and we'll try to get our podcast into one of their lists of, you know, the top 10 podcasts to listen to on a, on a road trip, or uh, maybe we're reaching out to um, uh, you know, travel and leisure mag magazines website and trying to get into, you know, their list of the top 10 travel podcasts to listen to. If, if, you know, if you're Expedia, uh, things like that, they can all be pitched. Speaking of pitching, uh, the next phase is what we call our PR and earned media. This is where we're creating publicity campaigns and materials and contact lists and, and just hitting the, you know, hitting, the, hitting the phones and emails and reaching out to all sorts of different media contacts. Um, we start with you know, podcast media contacts. So there is actually you know, quite a bit of podcast media these days. We then move on to like entertainment media, culture media. We then get into more like niche-based media. So if you're, you know, if you're a, a business that is in the, you know, the fintech space, for example, you know, you're, you're going to want to reach out to maybe Financial Post or, or you know, Wall Street Journal, things like that, and pitch them on why, you should be feature, you know, why they should feature your show in, in an interview. Um, we're then also looking at sort of national based medias, you know, New York Times, you know, uh, Chicago Tribune, uh, Toronto Star, things like that. Um, and, and just pitching and pitching and pitching and, and finding opportunities to, to get the, you know, get the show reviewed or, or maybe get the host interviewed. Um, the next area is what we call spotlight. There's a big misconception that when your podcast is featured at the top of, of Apple's directory, um, you've somehow beaten some sort of algorithm. <laughs> um, the, the reality is, is that those are all editorial decisions. Um, Apple has a big team of edit editors that are broken down by country and even broken down by category. And you can actually reach out to them and pitch them on why your show should be featured. Um, it could be a brand new show and you're really excited about it. And it's got a great host and it's got great guests and here's why you should feature us. Um, and, and that works in a lot of cases, or it could be, you know, 
and um, here's why our show should be um, included in some of their, you know, their spotlight lists of, of, you know, top 10 podcasts, you know, to listen to around Christmas time, or um, you can break it down by subject matter, or it could be about a specific character or host, really, really uh, no rules on it. The next is cross promotion. Um, we always like to cross promote because we're guaranteed to be hitting other podcast listeners. Um, obviously that's low hanging fruit for us. So we're looking at other podcasts that our, that our listeners might be listening to. And then we're reaching out to those podcasts. The podcast world is actually quite small and it's very, very friendly. So we're reaching out to those contacts and having conversations about what makes the most sense, you know, from a, a mutual value standpoint, and maybe we're having their host come on our show and, and, and we're interviewing them in exchange, you know, for our host being on their show or maybe we're swapping content. So one of our episodes is being offered to their listeners as a bonus episode in their feed. Um, really, really no rules again when it comes to these sorts of ideas. We're then looking at paid opportunities. Now, we find that paid social doesn't work all that well um, for downloads. It, it's, it's not to say that it won't work, it just we just haven't really found it to be as effective as paying for um, ad space on other podcast directories within podcasts themselves or, you know, host read podcast uh, uh, advertising, things like that. We find that to be much more uh, valuable. So there's a, a whole number of different opportunities, um, whether it's through Midroll or Stitcher, or there's all sorts of different um, markets out there to purchase ad space. Um, and, and we're looking for the right uh, opportunities to insert our podcast um, promotion into certain, uh, certain podcasts uh, that, that are also being listened to by our listeners. And then the final area is what we just call, kind of called the plus more bucket. And that's where we, we ask the, the, the brand and the organization, like, what are some of the unfair advantages that you have as an organization? And, and let's take advantage of those to promote the podcast. So if you're a bank, let's promote the show in, in the branch or on your deposit slips or in your email communication. If you're a nonprofit organization, you probably have a massive volunteer list that would want to know about your new podcast. So, you know, let's, let's, let's push the show out to them through emails or social or however you want to do it. Um, we always say that, you know, your, your initial listeners are going to be the ones you know really close to your brand and then they're going to become those evangelists and the word of mouth is going to spread and, and, and you go out from there, but take advantage of what you um, have from an organic, uh, you know, so, sorry, from a, from an owned perspective, and 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 use that uh, and leverage that for for listenership. I'm not going to walk you through these examples, but th you know, these are some examples of of, of um, some tactics we would take if we were talking about our pivot and pursuit podcast for Indeed. Um, you know, hitting each one of these buckets. So I encourage you to take a look at that when you get the deck. When you're promoting your show, you also want to consider the ecosystem that lives around the show. You know, I'm a big brand design guy, so it all has to look the same to me and all has to feel in family. You know, you're going to want to create great artwork. Uh, the, the specs you're going for is a JPEG or a PNG that's 1300 by 1300. If you can create that, that's going to work for the majority of uh, podcast players. Uh, you want the artwork to be nice and clean, easy to read. Um, you also want to consider a landing page or a microsite for the, for the show, a place for the listener to go to receive more information, either about the episode, about the guests, about the host, things like that. You then want to think about social content. You know, if you're going to be promoting the show, how are you, how is that going to look and feel? Um, we recommend creating a bit of a style guide so that there's some consistency. And then finally, social links, you know, um, you're going to want to have, a, 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 a social links to share the show. Um, I'm going to talk about that in just a second on, on ways that you can do so to also get back a ton of, uh, ton, ton of data and information. This is just an example of a very quick landing page for our pivot and pursuit uh, site. And a little promotion that we put together, which you can watch in the, in the deck as well. Our final fifth phase is called the pull phase. And, and this is where um, podcasting, you know, really, really gets exciting because you've pushed your show out to the world. You're now able to receive all this information back. Um, depending on the, the host server that you're using, it's going to pull in all your analytic information and all your consumption um, information. So analytics would be things like downloads, subscribers, you know, what the reach is, what, you know, what your reviews are, um, both on a star level, but also comments, 
what are the demographics of the listeners? What's the ge geography of the listeners looking like? What part of the world are they in? Um, but, but one of the areas that really will help the podcast improve is looking at the consumption data. And Amanda, you had asked earlier about how we uh, um, um, analyze our listen through rates. This is where the consumption data comes in. Um, we're gonna be able to receive information from Apple and, and Spotify and, and Stitcher and all the different um, apps on what part of the episode listeners are dropping off from, um, what part they're skipping, what part they're, um, they're finding, frankly, either uninteresting, boring. <laughs> um, and, and, and you use that data to help uh, inform your future episodes. So uh, we're looking at um, the, the listen through rate um, from all those apps. Now, not, this, this is not as difficult as it sounds, but unfortunately, um, all of the um, all of that information um, typically needs to be manually pulled and and, and into a, a separate uh, program we we use called Chartable. Um, Chartable allows us to create uh, what are called smart links, and when you use those smart links, um, it's it's going to pull back all of that consumption data for you. Um, so it, it's a bit separate from your your. Um, your uh, your host server software, um, it's more so from a from a more, from a marketing perspective, um, going to be much more uh, uh, a, a value to you know to sign up for um, is those smart links. They're they're really really great to be to be using. So we're almost wrapped up here. Before we go, we wanted to quickly um, tell you a little bit more about Jar Audio. Um, so our leadership team, um, which is, is based in Vancouver, but we work entirely remotely, um, is, a, is a blend of, of um, uh, uh, leaders who have, have built big brands, they've produced engaging digital content, and they tell really compelling stories. Uh, we're supported, though, by inc an incredible creative team that consists of writers, recordists, sound editors, and audio growth strategists that blend journalistic integrity with audio expertise. We are a full service agency, so we are able to do everything from uh, start to finish for you. Um, it's also very much uh, um, uh, uh, something that we are able to um, make more uh, a la carte, should that need, need, need to be. And, and if there are some things that you're wanting to do, we can, we can uh, discuss um, leaning in or leaning back on a few things. We've been very lucky to work with some great brands like Expedia, Cineplex, Lululemon, RBC, which is Canada's largest bank, uh, Sage Natural Wellness, Van City, which is one of the country's uh, greatest uh, credit unions, and the Port of Vancouver. Plus, we have a ton of shows in production right now, uh, so keep an eye out for those as they are released um, in, in the near future. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Roger. We'd love an opportunity to talk to you, whether you're a brand, whether you work for an agency, whether you're in the industry and you just wanted to reach out and talk to other people who are doing some similar things. Um, we'd love the opportunity to chat in more detail. As Roger said, we're a full service agency, but we're, our services are also scalable. So we step back where certain brands or agencies have particular strengths. As we mentioned, it takes about four months to complete uh, an average six uh, episode series. And uh, to begin, we usually just suggest having a call. So again, if you're any one of those stakeholders, we'd love an opportunity to chat in more detail. So please reach out. Yeah, and, and before you go, um, in, in, the, in the next little while, um, you're going to receive a, an email from Paul, uh, just providing you with access to today's presentation, as well as the PDF of, of the deck. Also included in that is, is a special offer that we're giving, giving to everyone. Uh, we talked a lot about you know, the growth of the podcast market. We've actually compiled all of the best research on the podcast listener as well as uh, the numbers around you know, listenership throughout, uh, throughout different countries. And we've created um, the vital podcast statistics, all brands should know, microsite essentially, uh, which you can go to and use to help inform you know, your future decisions when it comes to podcasting, or, or actually use it to um, you know, maybe sell the idea internally to, to your boss or team or whoever uh, is gonna be helping make the decision on moving forward with podcasting. Um, so you'll receive access to that in, in the presentation and the deck. Um, please know though that if anybody has any questions, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. In fact, does anybody have any questions before we log off the webinar today? I know Ad Amanda asked that one question. Um, if you do have a question, please feel free to, to drop it in the Q&A box. 
right now. Just give it a sec. If, if, if it looks as if we don't have any questions, um, we will give you guys a you know, five, five extra minutes of your time. Uh, once again, we really appreciate uh, spending the time with us today. If anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to Paul. Keep listening to podcasts <laughs> and have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody.